Well, welcome to Middlesex Moments Radio Show. I'm Dr. Anna Wasesha, president of Middlesex Community College, located right here in Middletown, Connecticut. And today my guest is Amy Lawton. She works with our Veterinary Technology Program. Uh, the deadline for applications is coming up, so we wanted to hear from her. But the first thing I wanted to know, since I always like to know more about the people I'm talking with anyway, is what do the initials CVT, AVTA mean on the jacket that you're wearing today? Well, thank you very much for having me today. Um, the CVT stands for Certified Veterinary Technician, and that means that a technician has sat for a national board examination, and once you receive a passing score for that examination, then you will earn the title of a Certified Veterinary Technician. Some of the states do require that you maintain that certification. Connecticut is one of those states where you do not at this time have to maintain certification, but it's a nice way to let people know that you've actually sat and took that national examination. I went on to obtain my VTS in anesthesia, which is a veterinary technician specialty. And I chose to specialize in anesthesia. That's something I'm really passionate about relieving pain and preventing anxiety in the veterinary patient. So I did some extra years outside of school. This is all done through hands-on clinical training. I had the pleasure of working with some really wonderful anesthesiologists, veterinary anesthesiologists, and um, completed an application process which included continuing education credits, uh, case reports, skill set checklist and whatnot, which then get sent to uh, an academy. And once they review your application and they accept your application, you are then invited to sit for a four-hour written examination. So once you have taken the written examination and passed it, then you will obtain that specialty for that specific area of interest. And again, mine was in anesthesia. Okay, so we have a ton of things we can talk about here. But let's ground this in where you work. So you work partially for Middlesex, but do you also work for? Yes, I also work for Piper Memorial Veterinary Center. Which is a remarkable space, right? And you do everything. That's, that's why it must be why anesthesia is so great be, for you because yes. so much surgery goes on there. Yeah, a lot of surgery goes on there and actually the vet tech program here at the college is in a collaboration with the Piper Hospitals. Uh, it's really nice. It's only two miles away from campus and the students actually get a nice exposure to a variety of, of different practices within veterinary medicine. So when we come back, because now we have to take a break, the time goes by very, very quickly, I want to ask about those board exams, because people always say, you know, there are board exams for nursing, board exams for radiological technology, board exams for your field, but what, what does that feel like? You know, what's it like to sit down and, and answer questions, and what kinds of questions do they ask? So we will be right back after this break, and we're going to ask about, or talk about board exams. Well, welcome back to the Middlesex Moments Radio Show. I'm Anna Wasesha, president of Middlesex Community College, and Amy Lawton is my guest today. And before the break, uh, she was talking about taking two separate sets of board exams, and our students would take a board exam as well. So what are you getting into when you take a board exam? How long do they take? What kinds of questions? Do you, are you writing by hand? So tell me about your experience. Sure, sure. the VTNE exam or the Veterinary Technician National Exam is given several times throughout the year. Uh, you do have to make an appointment through the specific testing facilities to take the exam. And the test is all computerized. Way back when, when I took it, it was all handwritten, but it's now computerized, so it's, it's more convenient to schedule for a lot of people to um, you know, get that done even on their lunch break, potentially. Um, but they ask a wide variety of questions. So they're gonna ask questions based on areas of study here through the program. So they're gonna ask questions regarding uh, patient care, uh, radiology, they'll also ask questions about large animal medicine, small animal medicine, surgery, anesthesia, parasitology. Um, there's lots of areas that they can ask us questions on. Um, there are some nice uh, study guides available also to help students prepare for the exam. And there are some websites where you can actually have a question of the day sent to you, uh, to your smartphone or to your email, and they'll give you an opportunity to try and answer that question for that day. Um, but that's usually just a couple hour examination and uh, you pretty much know when you leave the building whether or not you've passed because it is now computerized. 
Well, that's really nice. Yeah, immediate feedback. Is it yes. all multiple choice, true, false? All multiple choice. Yeah. So you have to memorize a lot, I bet. You do. Yes. <laughs> so now let's talk about the program. This is the program at Middlesex Community College. Yes. It's a selective admission program, so you have that's to correct. apply. And so you, you take it from there. Deadlines, what do you have to do to apply? When does it start? What are you getting into when you say you want to do the program? Sure. The veterinary technology program is a full-time commitment. Students should expect a pretty heavy course load during their f- two years here at the college. It is a two-year program. You will graduate with an associate's degree. So that's about 69 credits. The program has certain prerequisites that you will need to take prior to admission into the vet tech program. So we're going to look for uh, some English, math, biology, chemistry, and some basic computer classes. And then once you have those and you submit your application, which by the way are due April 1st of this year, the applications then get reviewed. Then because it is a selective admissions process, you will be invited back for a interview to uh, the committee members. And then based on your admissions packet, which also includes an essay of intent, we know why do you want to be in the veterinary technology program here at the college. We certainly will also look at your transcripts, uh, any uh, classes that you've taken at other colleges elsewhere to make sure everything fits well into our program here. And then um, we're looking to accept about 24 students into the program this year. So if we follow the arc of your career, how did you decide as as a young'un that you wanted to do this? And then looking back at it from your vantage point now, what you know? Did you know what you were getting into, and do you, and or did you find that the field was different than you expected? So, how, what what made you want to do it? In yeah, the first place? I mean, I think for a lot of people, I always knew I wanted to work with animals, and so as I got older and and um, started to look at careers involving animals, um, you know, I looked at certainly being a veterinarian, but. Uh, I came to discover that it was really that hands-on, day-to-day nursing care of the animals uh, that was what I wanted to do. Would you say that a vet tech is like a nurse is to a doctor? Is that what? Yes. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. We do a lot of that hands-on, day-to-day nursing care of the animals, um, and that's really what I wanted to do. I wanted to take care of patients just like human nurses do with people on a daily basis. So I actually got interested in um, veterinary medicine in high school uh, through a career day where Dr. Nunez came to a career day at Mercy High School. Dr. Nunez is um, one of the owners of the Piper Olson Veterinary Hospital, which we have the collaboration with. And she came and talked about careers in veterinary medicine. And I remember meeting with her after the class to get more information about Um, you know, what I could do at that age, which I think I was only 15 at the time, um, because I really wanted to get involved with animals. And so I had to wait till I was 16 at that time and then got a job working with Dr. Nunez at her practice uh, in the kennels, you know, so that's really where I got my first hands-on experience. And I think that's really important to get some time with animals under your belt prior to enrolling in the program, get used to uh, working with animals, um, experiencing veterinary medicine, uh, kind of behind the behind the scenes from more so than just being a pet owner, it's gonna be really valuable to your overall uh, application. So I kind of started there working in the kennels and eventually worked my way up to doing more assistant type work. Um, so kind of pulled me out of the kennels and did helped with more of the medical side of veterinary medicine as an assistant. And then I went off uh, into college. Um, I pursued vet tech at Becker College in Massachusetts and continued to work as a assistant, made my way on to doing some more tech stuff as I made my way through the program there at Becker. And then after I graduated Becker College, I worked at Tufts University, so a very large teaching university, veterinary teaching university in Massachusetts. That's where I got the majority of my experience in emergency critical care and then anesthesia. So it was through my experiences at the university where I really decided that anesthesia was something that I really wanted to pursue further. And it was actually at that time, so that was about 2002, 
where they just started creating the academies of veterinary technician specialists. So that was a brand new uh, academy that was created to recognize um, specialized veterinary technician services, basically. Um, and so I was the first class of seven to sit for that exam and, and, and um, submit that application packet that I talked about earlier. After that, a lot of things, different things opened up for me. I was invited to speak at national uh, veterinary conferences. I also published uh, a book chapter over the last couple of years, um, so articles in some vet tech uh, magazines at the time. Um, Tell me something about those articles. What what are they about? Uh, anesthesia, of course. Yeah, anesthesia, of course. <laughs> of course. Okay. Um, one of the uh, book chapters is actually um, can be used to in tech programs. It's an anesthesia book created uh, created for techs and programs. And I had a chapter uh, in that textbook uh, in relation to patient monitoring uh, while they're under anesthesia. And then the um, article that I wrote for, the two articles I wrote for Vet Tech Magazine, one was about kind of the parts and pieces and the functions of an anesthesia machine. So knowing what each part uh, of the machine does um, and then kind of how to check everything and make sure everything's working properly because that's, be, that's very important to make sure your anesthesia equipment is working properly. Um, and so those were uh, published a couple of years ago. Um, and then I kind of moved out of the university type uh, environment and went to a large referral hospital in New Hampshire, uh, moved to Maine, uh, worked there for several years, and then decided it was time to come back home. I'm originally from Connecticut. If you went to Mercy. You yeah, yeah. There, right? I was gone for about 20 years. So uh, it was kind of funny how everything kind of fell into place with uh, the addition that Piper Olson, Piper Memorial Veterinary Hospital was opening. Um, and so I came back home and um, worked there as their director of technical services. So I oversaw the technical staff, helped with staff training and uh, management, um, but then also certainly uh, kept on with patient care and making sure that I still did what I loved, which was working in anesthesia and surgery. I, this anesthesia thing is such an interesting idea because I can't picture it. Uh, I, I, you know, for example, I, what have you anesthetized or helped to anesthetize other than a cat and a dog? Wow. Um, I actually have had um, some really great opportunities over the last several years. Um, I've done some birds of prey, uh, eagles, hawks. Uh, we've worked with some zoos um, over the last couple of years. Um, I got to do some um, big cats. I did a big leopard. Cats. Oh, wow. Uh, we, I've done a hyena. How, okay, let's just pick, pick <laughs> any one of the hyena. Hyenas Hyena. are, well, they're all wild animals. How do you even subdue them long enough to gas them? Yep, so, yeah. I mean, we did rely on the the rehabilitators or the zoos to bring them to us mm -hmm. um, and once they brought them to us they're usually somewhat confined in a, in a cage a special type of cage and so we were able to get them an injection um, so that then they would you know fall asleep enough for us to be able to get them safely out of their holding cage and then induce uh, anesthesia for whatever procedure they're having done. But I got to tell you working on, on that hyena was probably the, one of the highlights of my career. I mean that's like I mean, that animal looked so, like, just looked like he got pulled out of the wild. Right. Um, and was he a zoo animal? He was, yeah. And what was, why were you treating him? He had him? teeth problems. <laughs> so he was having a dental. He was having a dental. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. We want to make sure that his teeth look good. And I'm sure, you know, I mean, anybody who's had a tooth issue knows it hurts a lot. It, you know, so you're really in a lot of pain if your teeth are in bad shape. Okay, well, we, this part of the program has just flown by. We have to stop for a break, and when we come back, we'll talk some more about anything, but especially anesthesia and wild animals. Well, welcome back to Middlesex Moments Radio Show. We were just uh, over the break going down memory lane with animals we've known and loved and, and rescued. Uh, and do you have animals? Oh, yeah. yes. What do you have? Oh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, I have three dogs, two King Charles Cavalier Spaniels, one rescue that I just got a, about a month ago, 10-year-old rescue. Um, I also have a golden retriever and six cats. Oh, wow. So I have a house full. You do. I think when you work in veterinary medicine, you do end up with a few more than you initially intended um, because somebody needs a home where you work. 
Right. Well, that's wonderful. The 10 year old rescue, for yes. example. Yeah. 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 So I have an English Springer Spaniel, uh, and he's adorable. But yeah, and he was a you know he was a humane society animal. Where's the closest humane society here in Connecticut? Newington, I believe. Newington, yeah. yeah. So they they you know that's a good organization too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then now there are so many no kill shelters and places that do a good job trying to find. Yeah, homes. yeah. He was in um, Cavalier Rescue Group, mm-hmm. and uh, his owners lost their jobs and their home. Yeah. And uh, here's this ten year old dog who you know, needed a nice retirement home. Yeah. So that's what we're providing for him. So is he put off by all the cats? He doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Just happy to be there. Just happy to, that's, yeah, have a yeah. couch to lay on. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, animals, I mean, you know, so what do you think about the psychology of animals? I was going to say the saddest notes I see in the Middletown Press where they almost always say, here's the cat of the day or the dog of the day, or when the, the owners have gotten sick or passed away. Do you think those poor animals, you know, must have a place in their heart for the owner. So how, what is it about the psychology of dogs, especially cats, I think, are a different breed. But, but they yeah, obviously I mean, that's tough. And, you know, I can only speak for what I'm maybe now experiencing with the 10-year-old rescue. Like, we look at him and we know he's got a past. And we just don't know what it is. Right, right. Um, he appeared very well cared for. He's got really great veterinary records and I have access to all of them but we don't know anything about a routine that he had Um, you know was he used to going for walks every day Um, you know does he like the car he appears to like the car but um, you know what did he just see in his 10 years prior to us getting him and we just don't know I I would think he does miss the life that he had because that was all he knew for 10 years But I also like to think that as he starts to settle in, he's realizing that these are good people and, you know, we do the best we can for him. You know, he's got some quirks. I think every animal has some quirks. So you just got to figure them out and work with the animal. Um, But I would like to think he's happy he has a nice, quiet retirement place where he can just pretty much do what he wants uh you know sleep and eat and go for walks right what's his name his name is max but he's also deaf oh so (laughs) we can call him whatever we want right right right. funny well we were you know this this program is going to end before we know it so let's and i'm going to be sure we do a few things like this is the business part of this which is Veterinary technology is a fantastic field, especially if you love animals. But you have to be able to do science. you got to be able to communicate with people. That's correct. There's an ethics, I'm sure, involved with this. Yes. So you got to have mm-hmm. a moral compass. Um, the program can take 24 students, and they go to, they go together for two years. Yes. And they don't just do Piper Olson uh, as a clinical site, but they go at least to visit places that uh, deal with large animals, and birds. Yes. Reptiles, maybe? Uh, lab animals. Lab animals. Oh, mm-hmm. lab animals. The oh, little mice running in cages. Yes. Things. Yes. Um, so, so if somebody's interested in in pursuing this, it would be great to have a conversation with you. I would think just to find you know ask questions about is this the right program just to get started, and then they need to apply by April first. Absolutely. So, would they find you on the website? Right. The website is the best way yep, to find or, um, you. Yeah. Or they can contact myself or Dr. Steve Levy, who's mm-hmm. the program coordinator here at the college. And one of us should be able to help you answer questions that you have or may help, you know, be able to advise you on the path to take to then eventually uh, apply for our program. Well, so in the arc of your career, is just, first of all, fascinating. It's amazing to me to hear it all. So it suggests to me that graduates of these kinds of programs don't only work in animal hospitals. They can also do other kinds of work. So Absolutely. Um, Well, you know, we're expecting about a 30% um, growth in jobs over the next eight to 10 years. So that's huge. Um, So I think a lot of um, opportunities will open up for graduates. Uh, If you graduate from a vet tech program here at the college or at other facilities, you know, the opportunities are endless as far as where you can go right after graduation. So let me have, let, may I interrupt you for a sure. moment? So when you become a certified vet, veterinary technician, that's a national certification, right? So you could go to Ohio or Wyoming and it would be recognized? It would be recognized, right. You may have to register a license for that state mm-hmm. depending on what that state requires. Connecticut doesn't require any at this time. 
But so you would have to make sure you knew what this, you know, the requirements were for the state that you eventually went to work in. Um, but you know, you can work in uh, laboratory medicine. You can work in, you know, private run general practices. You can work in emergency facilities, or, uh, referral practices that have uh, surgery specialty, uh, oncology, neurology, radiology. I mean, it's just endless. You can go into uh, teaching, uh, lecturing, um, writing. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's not just go to school and become this tech. Um, you go to school and, you know, you'll hopefully find your niche, hopefully find an area that maybe you're passionate about, and then maybe work towards that. So, there really are um, some exciting opportunities for you once once you graduate from the program. Have you seen uh, individuals go through the, the vet tech program at Becker or elsewhere and then make a decision to go into veterinary school to go to go on? Yes, a couple do do that mm -hmm. and it is a, a nice way to do things. I think good veterinarians were good veterinary technicians at one point in their career. And so you can be working as a technician and continuing to gain skills and knowledge and put all that information on everything you've learned towards vet school. So you can be working, you know, paying for school um, as you go on to vet school. There are um, one or two students in the current uh, program that are in potentially interested in going on to vet school once they're done yeah, with nice. the tech program. But if you want to go on to veterinary school and to become a veterinary medical doctor, right? You can't go to a, a university in Connecticut, right? Are there any programs in Connecticut? There are no vet school yeah, programs I didn't think in so. Connecticut. But just Tufts must have one, and so that's Tufts, Boston, yeah. and that's where you were. The veterinary school itself, yeah, the main hospital is in Grafton, but uh -huh. you do have to do some time in Boston. You can do your undergraduate in Connecticut, mm -hmm. um, but then you would have to go out of state for vet school itself. But a lot of these schools are research schools, right? So it, what did you see any research projects at Tufts that... I was not directly involved with... With the, the vet school? Uh, uh, yeah, with uh, research, no. Uh, I wasn't involved with any research directly, no. Yeah, I was just asking because uh, I, I came from Minnesota, and the University of Minnesota has got a veterinary school, and they do a huge amount of research. And it came in handy for us because we had a, um, a Jack Russell Terrier who developed a very odd kind of, of cancer. And they, they were doing research on that. Didn't, in the end, change much of the outcome. But at least, you know, there was somebody who knew an unusual disease. And, and I'm sure, I'm sure even at Piper you see things that aren't down the middle mainstream afflictions and diseases. Yes, quite often we do. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then is there a referral system in Connecticut? Or how do you handle that? Um, well, you know, I think a lot of the general practices um, will do their best to, to treat the animals and, and help the animals, but then they may get to a point where they're stumped or, you mm -hmm. know, they may need help. And so then they would probably seek somebody from a referral hospital, so someone who has advanced training in the specific area. If it was an oncology case, they refer out to an oncologist, and then that oncologist could work directly with the referring vet at that point and the owners to help figure out the best um you know, root of care for that patient. Mm -hmm. So have you found this to be a very rewarding field then? This is to look back. Did you know what you were getting into? And Yeah, I, I'm definitely very happy with the path my life has taken me. Um, when I look back, I think about um, everything I've seen and done since I've gone to school, and that's got me to where I am today. My career has gone full circle, in my opinion. I started out um, at Piper Olson and then 20 years later I found myself back at Piper Olson but in a much different role and more of a managerial supervisory role but certainly still doing what I was very passionate about um, and um, now being here at the college working with the vet tech program and kind of sharing everything I've learned with students over the years is so very rewarding I'm, I'm so happy to be part of the program here and and really excited about to see where the program goes over the next couple of years. Well, we're really happy to have you with the program, too. Thank so you. Thanks for being my guest today. Thank you very much. This has been the Middlesex Moments radio show. I'm Anna Wasesha, president of Middlesex. If you'd like to learn something more about the Vet Tech program or about the college in general, you can find us on the World Wide Web at mxcc.edu. Amy Lawton and I are both wishing you a very good day.